Today I want to talk to you about a topic entitled, Is Baptism Optional or Mandatory? This question we do get from time to time, and I want to answer this according to the Word of God today. Jesus stated in Mark 16, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So we see here that Jesus is given the commission for his disciples to go and preach the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And along with the receiving of the gospel or the believing of the gospel, a person will be baptized and they will be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So belief leads to baptism. A sincere belief, a serious belief in the gospel will lead to the obedience of the commands of Jesus Christ. John fifteen fourteen, Ye are my friends if, I should have highlighted that, ye do, do, do whatsoever I command you. And baptism is a command as we see that Jesus stated it along with preaching the gospel. That baptism, this doing of a thing, immersion in water, is a command that should follow the believer. And we'll see how it's a command a little further in this teaching. 1 Peter 3, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God awaited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water saved by water the like figure or similar to whereunto even baptism this is baptism this is immersion in water doth also now save us. So we see here that Peter is also confirming the word of Jesus Christ. Mark 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. We're not just taking a bath in the water. We're not just removing the dirt from our body. But the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, the good conscience is something that a person will have if they obey the commands of the Lord. How can one have a good conscience toward God if they refuse to be baptized? And if one just studies the rest of the scriptures in the word of God, they'll see what baptism actually does. It's for the remission of sins, according to Acts 2.38. And Ananias told Paul, Arise, wash away thy sins, be baptized. And we're given this sort of speech in in Romans, I believe chapter 6. It gives great detail on the death and resurrection of Christ and how the old man goes down in the water and one comes up a new person in Christ. One sheds off the sins of the flesh. One sheds off the old man. And they come up out of the water anew. And this is a good conscience. This is something that if someone's obedient to the words of the Lord and they not only believe the gospel and come to repentance, but they are baptized, they will have a good conscience towards God. But I'm afraid to say that There are many that will not have a good conscience towards God because they literally teach that baptism is not necessary. And I've heard it taught by certain teachers, that street preachers even, that baptism is just optional. It's not mandatory. And how can one have a good conscience standing before a holy, righteous God if they have nullified the necessity of baptism or the importance of baptism? It's the answer of a good conscience toward God. Galatians 3, For as many of you, he didn't say all, but as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have what? Put on Christ. As many of you as have been baptized into Christ. 
into Christ, into the Lord Jesus Christ. Not into titles, not into Father, Son, Holy Spirit titles, but in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus Christ. Have put on Christ. Acts 22, and we spoke about this earlier, Ananias tells Paul, And now, why tarriest thou, or why are you waiting? Why are you being hindered? Why are you just not putting this in a high priority, in great importance? Why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. What is the name of the Lord? It's Jesus Christ. Hence, the reason why we baptized in the name above all names. Jesus Christ, or the Lord Jesus Christ. So, is baptism optional or mandatory? Mandatory. What about the male factor on the cross? And the man who was convicted of a crime that was being crucified next to Jesus Christ, what about him? Well, that was in the Old Testament. Christ hadn't died yet. We are under the New Testament now. And notice in Hebrews 9, For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after, after, after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. So Jesus Christ died and the New Testament came about. And we are now under that New Testament and we're given instruction as in Luke 24, 47, where Jesus stated, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem and that begun on the day of Pentecost through the preaching of Peter, the disciple of Jesus Christ, when he said to the inquiring minds on what they should do after they were pricked in the heart, after they heard the gospel, Peter replied and commanded them to be baptized. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And let us remember, baptism is not a work or a burden. A lot of people try to say that baptism is a work, and, and they get that confused with the works that the Galatians were going back into, which were the Old Testament uh, uh, works. Uh, the schoolmaster, they want it to be under that burden once again. But no, baptism is not a work or a burden. Baptism is a privilege and a blessing. So baptism is not a work or a burden, but they make it out to be a work and a burden unto themselves. But to us who are obedient and believe the gospel, baptism is a privilege and it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be buried with Christ in baptism. It's a blessing to have all of your sins washed away. Calling upon the name of the Lord. I've heard it said that uh, people would like to wait until their birthday or until their parents come back to town. Listen, there's no waiting. I remember when I got baptized, when the Lord convicted me of baptism, it was less than 24 hours before I was given that illumination from the Holy Spirit that I needed to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ because I had prior, uh, previously been baptized in titles and I knew something in my spirit, my conscience. It wasn't, it, I, I, had, I, didn't, I did not have a good conscience before God when I was immersed in titles. Even when I was immersed, I knew something was wrong when they called upon titles. Something was in my spirit told me, oh, red flag. And it was only a few months later until it was truly confirmed to me by another brother in the Lord who shared with me a audio cassette tape on the importance of baptism in Jesus' name. I listened to that tape at night, roughly around 9 p.m. This is years ago. 9 p.m. at night, and many of you heard this story. Just a quick summary. I listened to the uh, 
audio cassette tape at 9 p.m. around 9 p.m. at night prior to bed and I couldn't sleep the whole night because I was so convicted listening to that well, it was a 45 to an hour long message on baptism in the Jesus name and the importance of the name of Jesus Christ I tossed and turned the whole night next morning I flipped through the yellow pages at that time there were yellow pages we actually had yellow pages to look up numbers and, and businesses and whatnot so the Lord led me to a church and I it was a Thursday night and I uh, went to that Bible study at that church and I was immediately baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and it was a blessing it truly was a blessing so I pray that this message has been a blessing unto you and may you go in peace in Jesus name